Welcome to Between the Reads, where we share a spotlight on some of the most talented black authors in the industry to discuss their works of fiction and the inspirations behind them. Each episode, we'll dive into the rich and diverse world of literature, exploring everything from historical fiction to romance and speculative fiction to YA and beyond. Tune in as we celebrate the voices of black authors and the power of storytelling. Are you ready, booze and bros? Then sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Miss Jenkins is the nation's premier writer of African-American historical romance fiction and specializes in 19th century African-American life. She's a USA Today best-selling author, an NAACP Image Award nominee, and the 2017 recipient of Romance Writers of America's Nora Roberts Lifetime Achievement Award. She has over 50 published works and has been featured in many major publications, including the New York Times, People Magazine, Wall Street Journal on NPR, and CBS Sunday Morning. She speaks widely on African-American history, romance, and writing. Some of her work has been optioned by Sony Television and Al Roker Entertainment. Miss Beverly Jenkins, welcome to Between the Reads. I even got the audience cheer going for you. Giving you a standing ovation right now, ma'am. I just... Oh, this is yeah, too silly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Welcome Thank to Between you. the Reads. Thank you for the invite. You You're know, welcome. This is, warms my heart because it's freezing outside. Uh, it's yeah. like a blistering like five degrees this morning. So I was going to say you're in Detroit, so I know it's colder there than it is oh. here in Maryland. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send it to you. Send it to y'all this weekend. No, that's that's <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't I don't need it. My my dad is from Detroit, Albion, Jackson area, and we have family oh, okay. in in in, in uh, he's, so he's in, a in Michigan too. He's a Michigander. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I y you can keep that cold weather over there, Miss Bev. <laughs> <laughs> keep it over there. I don't need it. <laughs> I understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so I first heard about you when I watched a film called Love Between the Covers mm -hmm. and something about you just felt like home to me. And the first book I ever read by you was called Forbidden and I fell in love with your historical romance books. They're educational, they're fun, they're steamy. So I just had to put that out there before we even started the interview that I just... I don't know. I, everybody calls you, you know, the auntie, but I truly feel like you, there was just something about you that just, I instantly just connected with. And I'm just so honored that you are here with me today. So honored to be invited because not a lot of uh, the, the book folks online connect with me. I don't know why. I mean, I've gotten a few, but you know, I'm always available for y'all. So, uh, when I got the invite, I was like, yes. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I honestly, I was scared. To, I was sat there and I wrote to your agent and I had the email sitting there and I was scared to hit send because you're like the biggest guest I've had so far. My podcast is three years old. You're the biggest guest I've had so far. And I was sitting there and I had my finger on the send button and my husband said, what are you doing? I was like, I'm scared. What if she says no? He's like, hit the damn button and ask. <laughs> Tell him I said thank you. <laughs> no, come on now. <laughs> so I hit the button and I was like, what did I just do? And he was like, you asked her to be on your show. And he, you know, we I cuss on my show. So he was like, she shits behind a pair of shoes just like everybody else. Exactly. You be all right. <laughs> be all right. <laughs> be all right. <laughs> oh, so your book. Through the Storm is the first in the Levesque series. Am I saying that right, Levesque? Yeah, Levesque, yes. Yeah. Okay. It was the first one written, <clears throat> um, what, 95 or 96? Mm -hmm. And then I wrote a book that came before that. Indigo, right? No, 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 no. No, not Indigo? No, Captured. Captured. Okay. Which right. is the first okay. Levesque book. Okay. But not you know, publication wise, but 
Okay. Uh, when it, but, but, blah, 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 blah. when, <laughs> um, <clears throat> when Through the Storm came out, it was the first Lebec book. So, okay. Yeah. All right. And in the back of the book, you shared three inspirations for this story. Can you share those inspirations with our did readers? I? What did I, what did I say? <laughs> you said that uh, you had a desire to highlight the triumphs and tragedies of black life right. after the Civil War. The book Black Legacy was the second um, inspiration, uh, Black Legacy, America's Hidden Heritage, and Indigo. Because your fans said they wanted Raymond's. Right, Raymond's. And I changed his name yeah. to Raymond. Mm -hmm. That sounded more French to my Detroit, to my, <laughs> to my to Detroit the, ears. Detroit people. Uh, Detroit <laughs> yes. of the river. <laughs> of the river. Yes, yeah, I, I saw that it led Detroit de Lac Erie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we Which meant the Strait of Lake Erie. Right, yeah, yeah, sort of, but the Detroit River. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, I mean, now I done told everybody what the three inspirations were. So that, that's what made you write through the storm. Yeah. Yeah. That and, and wanting to highlight <clears throat> how reconstruction affected us mm -hmm. as a race mm -hmm. and how if, um, who is it? Eric Bonner has a book called uh, uh, Reconstruction America's Unfinished Revolution. Mm -hmm. And if it had finished, I think we'd be in a better place oh, as a country right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but they weren't having that. You know, mm -hmm. they couldn't, couldn't be having these black men up in this, you know, up in Washington. You couldn't have. Can't have us folks. making laws now. Making laws. Um, have us found in the schools because there were, you know, no public schools in the South. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as we got our, our independence, that was one of the first things that we did mm -hmm. was establish public schools. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the, you know, 1876, they said, okay, enough of this. <clears throat> you black folks need to get back in line. Mm -hmm. Get back in formation. Wiped so, it, wiped it uh, all out. Wiped it all out. Hmm. But, you know, we we resilient. Sure are. We kept rising. They burning our, you know, churches. We still praying. They burning mm -hmm. our schools. We still learning. Mm -hmm. So we are a unique, clever, strong. Yes. Don't give a shit what you do to us. We will continue to rise. That's just going to make us work <clears throat> harder. <laughs> Make Don't that make lemonade, make that lemonade much sweeter. So. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So tell us how you came up with the title "Through the Storm," which I feel like it's a double entendre there. Well, I don't think. I think my editor came up with that title. Okay. Because I don't think that was you know it's been so long ago, girl. I you know I'm the <laughs> I'm the woman now that can't find a car in the parking lot. So. Well, I can't either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I wanted to call it, but I really, I remember not being happy with the title, mm -hmm. but I don't remember what I was going to call it, but mm -hmm. it fits. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you think about the story, it, it does mm -hmm. fit. Because mm -hmm. um, there are uh, two storms, really. There's the storm of the Civil War, but then right. there's also that storm that Raymond and or Raymond and Raymond Sable are and, going and through. Sable going through, yeah, that's yes. true. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I don't know if that's the first time you read it. Oh, that's the first time I've read that one. I oh, did enjoy okay. it. Yes, and I have all the rest in the series, so I will be getting to those. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I enjoy all your books. I, you're an auto buy for me. I just awesome. So, Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you. So. Tell us how you constructed. Is it Mati? Is that how you say her name? Mati. 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 Tell us how you constructed her and who <coughs> she is in the book. She is Sable's great aunt. Mm -hmm. And I'm a pantser. I don't know if you know what a pantser is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for your audience who does may not know what a pantser is, um, I'm a writer who writes by the seat of her pants. Mm -hmm. I don't do a whole lot of plotting. I don't do a whole lot of organizing. 
I let the story sort of come to me organically. Mm -hmm. And my tea was one of those characters. I didn't know, you know, I, you know, I wrote her in, I sort of knew she, but I didn't know her history. Uh -huh. But as the story continued mm -hmm. and she started giving me more and more pieces of herself, mm -hmm. um, she became quite important mm -hmm. and a character who stood out. Mm -hmm. And the way she ended her yes. journey, yes, I didn't know that was going to happen. Really? That, I'm just trying to keep up. You know, I'm typing, trying to keep up. Wow. Um, but she had warned him. Uh huh. She, she had did. warned him. She did warn him. So uh, I'm like, oh my god, the house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> One so you're sitting there writing this like, oh my goodness, no, she's not. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that, that happens to me a lot when you're fans and you don't know what's going to happen. Right, You're right. just as surprised as the readers are. Right. But um, she was a powerful, she represented the the, the connection to Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, she re represented um, the connection to the spirit mm -hmm. that Sable took with her when she left. Yes. With the queens and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've read, you read Forbidden. Mm -hmm. And so she was part of the, the spirits for Ryan also. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. I love how that's connected. Yeah. Wow. I forgot about that. Yeah. Now let's talk about Sable. Mm -hmm. and who she is. So she's got a half-sister that's um, the, the plantation owner's daughter, and they were right. born six minutes apart. Right. And let's talk a little bit more about who Sable is. Well, you know, that happens. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he took her, Azalea, his, her mom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who was... Silly Ann's. Uh, yes, Silly Ann. Yeah, we 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 call mm -hmm. her Silly Ann. Silly um, Ann. Yes. On on the wedding trip to Europe, mm -hmm. and so he's doing his wife, and he's doing his slave. On his honeymoon. <laughs> on his honeymoon. They both Tri pregnant. Trifling. Uh yeah. So you got the quote unquote legitimate daughter, Mavis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. born and then Sable is born and they're close they are mm -hmm. true sisters mm -hmm. regardless of you know with the political stuff just like mm -hmm. Andrew and Ryan mm -hmm. they're born like six six minutes apart right you know also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but she had to be taken into the house because of the circumstances around her mom's death and Mati. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Sable is educated, yes. um, but she's still a slave. And mm -hmm. she knows who she is in the midst of all of that that's going on. Right. Because when we first see her, she's spying mm -hmm. on the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, so I absolutely loved her. Yeah. Because um, she was tough, she was strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, clever, mm -hmm. um, but had no concept that of someone loving her the way that you know Ramon would finally get his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna talk about him too. We gonna she, talk about him too. <laughs> she took him through some stuff. She did. She did. But, but, he, you know, but she, he took he took her through some stuff, and she took him right on back through some stuff. Right. Yeah. She, you know, she she gave as good as she got. <laughs> she did. She did. You know, she did. So, but um, through her we meet Harry Tubman, Araminta. Yeah, yeah I'm so funny ask you about because, that too. You know, that's so funny because, <clears throat> like I said, that book came out in what, 90, 96, 97, somewhere around in there. Mm -hmm. So when this new Harriet Tubman movie came out, mm -hmm. and people are saying, oh, wow, her first name is Araminta. 
And my readers were like, well, where y'all been? Right. You know, we knew we knew that back. Been known that. <laughs> been, been known that. Been, been known. known that. Look, and so, I wore my special Harriet Tubman shirt for you. Yeah. Bring, bring y'all asses, asses on. <laughs> yeah. Well, Harriet was a Harriet was something. Listen. I don't know. I, mean, I didn't see the movie because I, you know, I don't get my history through the movies. Right, right, but, right. You know, she was a cougar. You know, after yeah. the after the war, mm-hmm. you know, she married that brother, and he was she was like twenty five years older than he was, mm-hmm. and the, and the old heads in the abolition movement were like, you know, they was clutching their pearls. They was going, <laughs> "Oh my God, what is she doing? You know, what is she? Somebody call Harriet. You know, talk to Harriet. Find out what." She's Harry like, I'm like, getting mm. my groove on. What are you like, talking about? <laughs> you know, getting my groove back. So, right. She's yeah. Like, I don't know what y'all's problem is. That was going to be my next question. So, Sable flees. There's some events. I'm not going to tell y'all what happens. You want to know? Right. You got to read the book. You got to read the book. But she flees the plantation. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know where she's going, but she trusts the old queens to guide her. Yeah. And as she's going through the woods, she comes across this you know, burnt out house and Harriet comes out. Yeah. What made you decide to put the general in the book? Because you can't do, excuse me, you can't do a civil rights book. I mean, a civil rights book, a civil war book or a reconstruction book without her. Mm -hmm. Because she was so integral to our part of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. The civil war is taught through the white gaze. Yes. But if you read the history through our gaze, mm-hmm. uh, with Benjamin Quarles and, 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 um, and those historians, mm-hmm. she's front and center. Yeah. You know, because she was front and center. You know, she's leading troops. She's spying. You know, she's freeing folks. Mm-hmm. Um, so leading was, revolts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Being a you know, cougar, you know, mm-hmm. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet needed love, too. <laughs> yes, she did. Well, she had a heart broken. Right, by John. You know, she mm-hmm. went back to get him. He was like, mm, nah, I got somebody else. I'll see you later. Right. You know, that had to have broken right. her heart. Mm-hmm. So you can't, in my mind, in what I do, mm-hmm. I can't do, and this was my first First, first Civil War book. Okay. Um, can't do a Civil War book without her. Mm. So that's why she was in, you know, in that house when Sable looking for some place to stay yeah. for the night. And yeah, there's your girl. Yeah, you and and Harriet are on the same level with me. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Don't yes, even try yes, that. Yes. Don't in, even in go there. In different worlds, but y'all, there are people in my life that are just role models. And, and I've been to, to the plantation where she, where she was enslaved here in Maryland. I've been to the store, the general store, mm-hmm. and I've touched the ground where she was. And Hallelujah. I'm an empath. So yeah. when I touch that ground, I... I just, I was there, you know, my kids were in the car. I've been twice. I went once with my dad when I was little and I went as a grown woman a couple of years ago. And when I touched that ground, I just, I couldn't help but cry. I, yeah. I, I wrote a, a, a book report about her when I was in third grade Okay. and got an F because they said that all this stuff couldn't have been true about her. So, yeah. Oh, the public, yep. public schools fails again. Epic yeah. fail, you know, they do that a lot. <laughs> you know, yeah, and that was in the 70s, so you know we're right on the cusp of the civil rights movement and, you know, there's right. hostility and all that, so yeah. it was. But you, you and Harriet, there there are people on my list. You and Harriet. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, for me, she's up in Saturn, you know, yeah. and I'm sort of down here and my little, looking at it, my little backyard <laughs> and stuff, you know, but... <laughs> I, I I will accept that praise. Yes, people on my list, the, the, my my sheroes. Okay, she's one you want. Okay, just deal with it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So in the book, Harriet takes her to Raymond, mm-hmm. 
who we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> and he takes her to a contraband camp. Right. Tell us what those are and the conditions there and why <clears throat> you chose to include this in the story. Because when you're looking at history through that war, through our gaze, you cannot not include the camps. Mm -hmm. um, black people did not wait for President Lincoln to free them. Mm -hmm. When the troops, Sherman's troop mostly, well, most of the Union troops, mm -hmm. wherever they went, black folks was like, we're done. We're following the troops. Mm -hmm. Whether they were on the East Coast, whether they were in the South. Um, and Sherman, <laughs> poor Sherman, he had like 10,000 black folks mm -hmm. trailing him. <laughs> you can't fight a war with 10,000 black people. <laughs> 10,000, anybody, they ain't trained. They, you know, they, they got grandma, they got auntie, they got cows, they got baby kids, right. you know, and they following the troops, right? Because a lot of times with the, with the black troops, their families followed. Mm -hmm. But this was a case where it was whole plantations of folks just like, we out of here. We, mm -hmm. the, the troops is here. We must be free. So we going. Right. Right. So Sherman's like, okay, I love y'all, but, but y'all got to go, go somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I can't fight no war with all y'all. <laughs> so what they did was that all of the confiscated plantations, mm -hmm. they settled black folks on these, on these plantations so that Sherman and his troops could, could do their job, right? Right, right. Because they ain't got but one job. Mm -hmm. That's the kicks the South says. Their the job is not to take One. care of these 10,000 black nope. people, right? Nope. So, but after a while, the conditions were awful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sanitary conditions, there's not enough food. Um, people in the North were trying to help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they, a lot of the aid societies, black and white, Mm -hmm. Started sending clothing and, and food and, but you know, like, you know, how you, what you going to do with a box full of hammers? You right. know, people were sending, you know, yes. stuff that they thought, you know, people would need. Like, what the but, hell you know, are we going to no, do with a box a, of we, hammers? We, we, we need, we need food. We need clothes. We need doctors. Right. right. You know, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so, um, by the end of the war, the conditions were absolutely, you know, atrocious. Mm -hmm. You know, people dysentery and, you know, typhus and, and all of those diseases that they didn't have, you know, drugs. They got drugs for now, but, mm -hmm. you know, didn't have them then. Mm -hmm. But, and then, I don't know if we're going to get to that part of the story or not, because it's not really in that, in the book. But they settled, you know, Sherman's, blah, 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 Sherman Special Order 15 mm -hmm. did give us 40 acres. Yes. There was no mules involved, mm -hmm. but they did give the 40 acres to about 18,000 uh, families that were mm -hmm. on the coast of Florida, Georgia, and South mm -hmm. Carolina. And this was mm -hmm. part of these confiscated mm -hmm. plantations. Mm -hmm. Well, after Lincoln was killed, and Johnson became the president. That that was the, the nail in our coffin. Yeah. Because the people who started the insurrection in the first place mm -hmm. was giving back their land. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Yeah. So And then all that land, you talked about that in the book, all that yeah. land. Ramon is reading back. this order and he's like stunned. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So the same troops that have escorted these black people to these lands We're had now. to turn around and escort them right off back the off. land after mm -hmm. they had built communities and schools and had planted mm -hmm. crops and were doing relatively well, mm -hmm. considering, you mm -hmm. know, the times and all of that. Right. So yeah. um, but then that led to the exodus. 1879, which I got other books about, you know, so. Yes, yeah, like your very first one, Night yeah. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can learn a yeah. lot of history 
you know, reading me for oh, yeah. what people call trashy that's, romance novels. You know, that's that. nice. I, mm, I'm very proud of what I write. And I am proud I to be a romance writer. I love nothing trashy about your books. And anybody <laughs> that says so, you send them my way. I'll I take ain't got care you. Of. I'll take care of them. <laughs> I take care of them. I ain't worried. You take care of them, send them to me, and I take the rest out. I take the knees out. I'm taking them out. I understand. <laughs> but yeah, so that was how the the uh, contraband camps and why mm-hmm. the contraband camps. So back to our original, your original right. question, mm-hmm. um, how and why they were established. And when I read about the food, the 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 salt horse and the lob course, I was oh, like, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, 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 yeah. And it was nasty. for those that are listening, the salt horse was beef that was so salty, I, it'd probably raise your blood pressure a hundred points. You tried yeah. it, even if it wasn't rancid. Yeah, because they had, you know, they had no real preservatives other than salt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if a piece of meat been sitting in salt for six weeks, mm-hmm. and he wants the troops to eat it and the people to eat it, and everybody's like, Ugh. you yeah. know, when it didn't have you know, bowls in it and worms and oh, oh. all that. Yeah. Yeah. And People the lab like, course wasn't much better. Don't you want to live back No, I don't want to no. live back then. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. I nope. can't. I, mm. You know, and red the lobster. The lab course wasn't any better. That was like salt pork and vegetables and whatever else they could find to throw in there. And Yeah. Yeah. The food was, the food was not amazing. Mm-mm. <laughs> Unless you were Raymond. <laughs> right. <laughs> then the food was amazing. Yeah, yeah, because he could hire his somebody. Little, his little rich self hired somebody <laughs> and was eating collards and yams and, you know, hens and all kinds of stuff while everybody else out there suffering. Yeah, like, yeah, man. he was a mess. <laughs> he Mr. was a mess, I'm... a total mess. So now in the contraband camps, they had marriage days, yeah. which... I love that in this time during the Civil War, with all this going on, we see black love. Yeah. Yeah. So were marriage days actually a thing that happened in these camps? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and why did you want to show this in your book? Because it was something that happened and it was something that, like you said, we don't know about. Mm. You know, I'm all about education. You know, I call what I do uh, edutainment. Mm-hmm. Education and entertainment, mm-hmm. a mashup. So, yeah, they would have these, you know, chaplains or, you know, priests or whatever come mm-hmm. in once a month. And, you know, and these are people because, you know, you couldn't marry. Right. I mean, you could marry. There were instances of people who got married mm-hmm. and stayed together um, because their masters were kind. Mm-hmm. But. Nine times out of ten, you know, you were in a common law marriage if it was, you know, if anything. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he could be sold overnight and she could be sold the next day. Right. But you did have people who, you know, were together, had been together. And they were lined up from here to Detroit mm-hmm. to get married once a month. or I, yeah. I, You know, and each camp had their own program. So mm-hmm. it could be one week. At this camp, it could be a month at that camp. It could be mm-hmm. every three months at, you know. Mm-hmm. But it did exist. Mm-hmm. And in fact, sometimes when I'm I'm looking for names, mm-hmm. for, for stories, you know, people, uh-huh. the Freeman Bureau has a list of all these marriages. Mm. And I can go to the Freeman Bureau website. Oh, wow. And grab names, you know, of wow. you know, the wives and, and who they were and, you know, what was their status as a as a, as a colored troop and, you uh-huh. know, what she did for a living and all of that. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many ways to make what I do come alive mm-hmm. based on live stuff. You mm-hmm. know, I like to put my stories where black people actually walk. I don't have to make this shit up, you know. Mm-hmm. That was going to be one of my questions. Yep. I don't have to make yep. this shit up because we have such a rich and deeply rooted history. Yes. In this country. But mm-hmm. it's told not through our gaze. It's mm-hmm. not told through the Mexican gaze. You know, their history here was is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not told through the, the, the Chinese-Americans gaze. 
Mm -hmm. You know, not only did they, <clears throat> you know, lay down the tracks for the railroads, they was right. mining, you know, mm -hmm. up in, yeah. in Wyoming and, and Montana and, you know, adding to this country's wealth. Mm -hmm. And they get paid back with the Chinese Exclusion Act. You know, mm -hmm. if you leave, you can't come back. We don't care if you've got family here. You know, it's just America. Some bullshit is what it oh, is. Oh, girl, it is. <laughs> it's, you know, I read this stuff and I'd be like, really, we doing this, this again, too? Right. You know? So, yeah. But yeah, yeah um, the marriage thing did, did happen. So. So since you're a pantser, that one uh, scene where my man just rolled up on the stage to get married with two women and couldn't decide. Yeah. Did that, you know? That happens, too. Okay. You know, because, you know, he, he two different plantations, two different women. Right. He got family here. He got babies here. Uh, and both of them are like, well, who are you going to choose? Right. And he's like, oh, uh, you know, as a and man would. And they decide for him, which one you got more kids with? Right. He's, they like go with that. Well, she's like, well, what about me? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you and, know? My, and then, you know, the, my fictional thing where the, the, the guy named Bond steps up and, mm -hmm. and tells her, you know, you know, and so the readers since that book have been like, but when are you going to write their story? When are you going to write the story? About, and I'm like, oh, my God, y'all killing me. Y'all killing I mean, me. It's your own fault, Miss Bev. You I be know. bringing up all these characters, and I we just know, want their girl. stories. I know. So many characters, so little time, you know. It's, it's your own fault. If you don't want to write about them, don't put them in the book. I know. Either that or have them already married. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because the way you write, we just want to see the stories. Yeah. And that's you know. a good thing. It's a gift. You know, and yeah. Gratitude is the attitude. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's talk about Ramon. Mm. His smooth talking fine ass. I know that's right. Oh. Uh. Now, his family has, he has quite a backstory. They're from Haiti, but they live in Louisiana. Yeah. He was a huge part of the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with, I mean, his backstory with Haiti? I mean, I know that, you know, the history of Haiti, but how did you decide to come up with that as his backstory? Because something else we don't know about. We don't know about mm -hmm. the, the, the rich, uh, elite, uh, Jean de Colour. Of Louisiana, mm -hmm. um, or our connections to Haiti and the mm -hmm. DR, mm -hmm. um, because you know, and, and you know, and it's funny because they tried to keep themselves separate from from regular black folks. Mm -hmm. You know, they went to Washington to petition to say, you know, we we got this money and we, you know we have this this background and. We really don't want you to lump us in with, you know, the, the, the freed, the, mm -hmm. you know, so. The and of course, Washington, black folk. And then Washington told them, get out of here. You know, right. you're black, y'all black. <laughs> y'all like, oh, right. going to be treated the same way. So, you same know, way. just don't even, don't even go there. <laughs> right. But, um, so you had, they finally got it together, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, so you had the, the free and mm -hmm. the freed, you know, right. and the free and, and, and the, the freed enslaved. Mm -hmm. But um, they had a very, very rich history. Uh, they saved Andrew Jackson's ass at the Battle of New Orleans during the, you know, the War 1812. Um, mm. Not that he deserved saving, but. I know, he was an asshole. That's he why was. a lot of Native Americans don't use a $10 bill. Um, really? Yeah. See, you're yeah. just like a wealth of information. This is no, why I you love know, you. No, and you know, and it's all written down. You know, it's like, yeah. Um, when uh, Andrew Jackson was an ass, um, he was the Cherokee. I think it's the Cherokee. You know, they were in the Southern States, Georgia, mostly Georgia, Alabama, all that area. Mm -hmm. And when he was trying to remove them, they took it to the Supreme Court because mm -hmm. that's who they were. Right. And the court said, you know, basically, y'all get to keep your land. Mm -hmm. 
And Andrew Jackson said, I don't care what the court said, get him out of here. Right. So he did that and he did, you know, the removal from with the Seminoles and the, what they call the five civilized tribes and mm-hmm. made them people walk to Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, got a lot of native friends that don't use the $10 bill. Wow. Give me two fives and I want that 10. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But anyway, you know, that's some it's more history that, you know, we don't get to talk about because mm-hmm. it makes people uncomfortable. I'm here to make people uncomfortable. I don't care about your comfort. I have a girlfriend I, who's, but she's Mohawk. In uh, fact, she's my son's godmother. Mm-hmm. And don't get her started on Thanksgiving. <laughs> don't get no. her started on Thanksgiving. Listen. <laughs> she is not about that. Yeah. Not about Thanksgiving. So, anyway, nah, we, we done got off yeah. track. Just, I do <laughs> this, right. you know. That's all right. You know, why not? Like, where was I? You know? <laughs> we were just talking about Raymond's backstory and okay. all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now, Raymond and Galino. Uh, yeah, Galen. 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 Right. Okay. It says, it says Galino in the book. Well, oh. Yeah, yeah. It, his whole name is, his, 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 his formal name is, is Galeno. Yeah. Galeno. But, but Galen. everybody okay. likes uh, Galen. Call him Galen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So they have this wonderful friendship. And I noticed in the books that I've read by you that men, the men are always very strong, but they have these deep, meaningful camaraderies with, with other men. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about a little bit about why you always want to show that aspect of it. Because it's true. You know, brothers is always hooked up with each other, Mm. you know, whether it's for the good or the bad or the ugly, you know, whether it's, you know, playing ball on Saturday or. You know, shooting a shit, you know, mm-hmm. playing cards on Thursday night or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like women, you know, they brothers got they they thing and sisters got they thing and right. But you know, we the brothers get such short shrift from mm-hmm. this country. Mm-hmm. Um, they have been defending this country since before it was a country. I mean, yes. it was black men that fought in the in the in the French and Indian Wars before mm-hmm. the United States even became a state, be, mm-hmm. be, became a country. Mm-hmm. They fought in the Revolution, you know, Revolutionary yes. War. Um, even though they weren't wanted mm-hmm. there until Washington realized he couldn't win the fight without them, and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, give the Negroes guns so that right. they can help us, you know. Win. Oh my God, uh-huh. the British are offering them freedom. Please give them guns. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, 1812, you know, Civil War, all of that. Mm-hmm. Buffalo Soldiers mm-hmm. um, patrolled from the Canadian border to the Rio Grande mm-hmm. in places where there were, they were the only law in a lot of places where there was no law. Um, they put up the telephone, telegraph poles, and mm-hmm. you know, escorted these people in these stagecoaches. That we don't want them to escorting us. Would you rather die? Oh well, we yeah. can let you die. We can let you die, because you know the Native Americans is pissed at y'all out here. All right. I mean, so y'all yeah. can die. That's fine with me. Yeah. So you know, and they got the worst equipment. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 Buffalo soldiers, especially the the, the tenth cavalry. Mm-hmm. So they got all of this stuff mm-hmm. that these brothers did to protect this country, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 inventions and being doctors and lawyers and all of that. Mm-hmm. And what do we see on TV? Well, until recently, Debbie dads—they all drug dealers. Right. They all dysfunctional. They all abusers. No, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is my way of giving them their flowers. My mm-hmm. books support the good men. Yes. I mean, yeah, there's men in, in everybody's life that you want to run your car over. Right. They, you know, step out <laughs> yeah. here so I can run you over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they are not the ones I'm writing about. Right. I'm writing about the ones that take care of their families, love their wives, love their kids, go mm-hmm. to work every damn day. Yeah. Bring their money home. Mm-hmm. 
Some of them even go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Nobody writes about them. Yeah. You know, they're too busy, you know, you know, maligning them and calling them out their name and all of that. Mm -hmm. So this is my love letter to, to the black man. Cause I love me some brothers. <laughs> they ain't nothing like them. I know. Even when nothing you want to like bury them in the backyard, you know, they ain't, ain't nothing like them. Nothing em. like them. <laughs> they ain't nothing like them. Yeah. <laughs> so now in the book, you go into detail about Lincoln's funeral and how the black people pay tribute to him. Mm -hmm. Why do that? Because there's something else we don't know. Every time I ask her, she's like, because we don't know. <laughs> we don't know that black men led that cortege. Uh -huh. We don't even know it was raining. I didn't know it was raining until I read the report. Mm. But, yeah, um, black soldiers led that, led that funeral cortege in D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, with their guns pointed backwards. Mm -hmm. And it was pouring rain that first day. We see that through Sable's eyes when she's standing with the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in fact, we don't know anything that I've ever read about mm -hmm. Lincoln's funeral, except that he was on the train and they took it back to Springfield. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the part we know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's again, giving us edutainment, yeah. entertainment and education. Yeah. Um, and that kind of shit's important. I mean, I wish, you know, I think that, you know, it's, it, if young kids, even me growing up, mm -hmm. had known about this, you know, instead of not knowing, the only thing they taught us is that we were slaves. That's it. Mm hmm And then Lincoln freed us and we were happy ever after. And right, Dr. we were King happy. And then we disappeared. Speech. Right. Then we disappeared for a century. Right. You right. Know, and I say I always say like the board came down and took us, you know, we was assimilated right. into the cube, right? God. And then somehow we came back and Dr. We, King said we, no, I have we a came dream. Back, and... We came back rioting in Watson sixty five. <laughs> you know, that's when we got picked up again. Right. I was right. I was fourteen at that time, right? Right, right. So You've got this whole century from 1865 to 1965 mm -hmm. where there's nothing. nothing. So you have else. these kids growing up not knowing anything about mm -hmm. how strong our history was in this country. Yeah. And the things that we did and what we put up with, you know, you know, we don't know about the Red Summer 1919 when, you know, all of the lynching was just at its height. You mm -hmm. know, it's... The only thing, you know, you got people today that don't even know why the the eight, the, 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 the historical black colleges came to be. Well, why are right. they? Well, if you look at the, the history, mm -hmm. we had to build those schools. Yes. No, so don't get we me started. We weren't allowed to go anywhere else. We weren't allowed to go anywhere else. Right. You know, and I'm we an were allowed HBCU to go to alum. Oberlin. I, yeah, yeah, we were allowed to go to Oberlin, which is why uh -huh. I, I highlight Oberlin mm -hmm. in my books. Mm -hmm. It was funny because... Um, at the beginning of my career, there was so much at Oberlin, they had me come and speak. Wow. You know, and flew me in and all that. And huh. you know, I did pretty good. It was my very first big speech, right? Uh-huh. But I didn't tell them that because I didn't think they would pay me if I did. <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much. I got on a plane and went home. Uh -huh. but, you know, there's a reason why... We have these black institutions yes. you know, because they didn't want us to have, they wouldn't let us in, in theirs. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the history, mm -hmm. everything that white America had from gamblers to riverboats to fur traders to mountain men, black folks had an equivalent. The only mm -hmm. thing we didn't have was the Ku Klux Klan. That's the only thing, and we didn't need that. Mm -mm. They was already in our ass. We didn't need that. Right. But every right. other institution and every other, I mean, we even had our own holidays back then. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. 
a lot of information. That, yeah. That I like. I want to know what these holidays are. Oh well, there's one in Indigo called okay. Martyr Day. Okay. Well, Black Feet. I have that book. I haven't read it yet. I gotta read it though. Okay. Yeah. I got. Um, a, I got a bunch of your books that I haven't read yet. Yeah. And I have a bunch that I have read. Yeah, you've read the probably the newer ones. The older mm -hmm. ones have okay. most of the history in them because okay. I didn't have to. Uh, the first 12, 13 books mm -hmm. have all the history because we didn't know. You know like mm -hmm. I said, entertainment, I'm teaching, I'm learning, readers are learning. And then after that, mm -hmm. I didn't have to teach them anymore. We could just have stories now. You know, have a little right, bit of history. Right, right. But, you know, I don't have to, mm -hmm. to tell you what happened in the Civil War. I don't have to tell you about you know, the mountain men. I don't have to tell you about the, the, the Sand Creek Massacre and the Cheyenne and, and mm -hmm. the, 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 the folks in, in Colorado that killed all them, them, them kids and them women. Um, mm. So when you read the older books, they're a lot mm -hmm. more history centered than mm -hmm. Breathless or Tempest or Forbidden mm -hmm. or, you know, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I need to read some of your older ones because I kind of came in like I told you. Forbidden was the first one I read with you, mm -hmm. and I've read like Breathless in that series. So yeah. I need to go back. I want. I especially want to read um, Night Song, your first book, because it's about the Exodusters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I have a book on them, but I, I want to read that book absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and then that's what the Blessing series is based on, is mm -hmm. um, the Exodus, which is my. Mm -hmm. Well, we got 11 books in that series. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a modern day small town series mm -hmm. um, based on Nicodemus, Kansas. So, you know, I'm, I'm, my readers are keeping up with me. You know, right. they, 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 they learn and I'm learning. I have two young adult historicals also. Um, mm -hmm. Belle and JoJo. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to just be a blessing and. I'm just trying to you help are. help folks out. You are. Now, I I saw an interview with you, and you talked about have you have you been able to make it to Nicodemus yet? Because I know you mm -mm, said you were no. invited. Have you? No. You haven't made it yet. A couple of my readers no. went a few years ago, um, okay. and they had a good time. And you know, and we mm. were going to go. My group was going to go, but there's no place to stay because you mm. know there's no infrastructure there anymore. So even though yeah. it's a a historic spot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at the beginning, I got, you know, they were like, come. And I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. I love y'all. Okay. <laughs> Where am I going to stay? Y'all ain't got no yeah. place for me to stay. Yeah, I don't have an RV. <laughs> One of my girlfriends did have an RV, though. <laughs> but it won't hold 40 of us, you know, so. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about Ramon and Sable and them love scenes, Miss Bev. Those love scenes. I need to know. Do you set the mood before you write your love scenes? Do you do you put on some music? Do you drink some wine? I mean, what do you do? Because when I, no lie, I have my watch on. Uh, and, it, I, you know, it, it keeps track of my pulse. And every time I read one of your love scenes, my watch is like, your pulse is high. It's time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let's just say... My husband and I had a good time. So these are inspired by the husband. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Lost him to cancer. rest in peace. I know. Yes. Lost him to cancer in 03. But he was a mess. Lord, you know, I tell, you know, my, you know, I tell my readers, I say, you know, I, before I cleaned out the basement, a lot of broken furniture down there. You know, a oh. lot of broken chairs and, and you know, okay. Hey, my daughter was always, "Will y'all get a room?" You know, I'm like, <laughs> like we got a whole, we got, we a got whole the whole house, house full of rooms, <laughs> the whole house. Go sit down somewhere, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> here's twenty dollars. Get out. Go, go, right. go to see a movie. So. Yeah, yeah. Go to your room. You won't have to see us. <laughs> but it's yeah, headphones too, so they don't have to hear it. Either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were mostly ah, you quiet. You're making me blush. So, I, so these are in, inspired by you and your husband's love. Love affair. Love affair. Wow. 
Yeah. So I mean, do you? So, so when you're going to write, do you? And you're you're thinking of him. I mean, do you kind of like turn off the lights? You get some mm, wine. I just write. You know, no, just write. that. Well, you know, I, I for a while, uh, a couple times. Well, once or twice. Um, I tried listening to R and B right while I was writing. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> I remember I had Luther on, uh-huh. and I looked at the screen and I had the lyrics written oh no i was like okay no i can't do this <laughs> so then i you know then when i need the energy because i'm an old rocker right also uh-huh so you know it's like put on some led zeppelin or uh-huh. you know, some rolling stone something you know something to, uh-huh. to keep the energy up but uh-huh. won't wind up on the screen in the middle of the love scene you know so right. yeah <laughs> yeah because we, I have my my group of friends, you know, uh, reading friends, especially like DL and Gracia. They mm-hmm. they make they laugh because uh, in classy they laugh because there's a scene from um, Eddie Murphy's movie um, with with the with the fat people with the clumps. I forget. Oh, the I, name yeah, of the movie. yeah, the clumps. I never saw those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a scene in there where one of the old women and she's like, Michael Douglas make me moist. Yeah. And with me, I said, they started talking about your books. I said, look, Beverly Jenkins book be making me moist. So that's <laughs> like our, I, I be attacking my husband sometimes. I have to put a bookmark in and go attack my husband. Well, you know what? <laughs> After I read those scenes. <laughs> I got letters at the beginning of my career because a lot of my 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 readers, um, they were using the books as cuddle time, you know, oh, okay. before they went to bed. Mm-hmm. And he'd read, you know, a chapter, she'd read a chapter, or he'd read a couple of pages. She'd... So I started uh-huh. getting these letters from the brothers. And uh-huh. they were like, <laughs> I remember one, Thank he you. said, exactly. <laughs> and like, Ms. Jenkins, <laughs> thank you so much. And the brother said, <laughs> Because now my baby is more, and the word to use, amenable to other stuff. And I'm like, my job here is done. <laughs> but yeah, people in the community, you know, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. Because I'm in a small town. You know, uh-huh. I was brownie leader, real active in my church, real active in the community. Uh-huh. And they started reading these books, and they were like, yep, a lot of smiling husbands <laughs> around here. <laughs> I'm like, y'all are too silly. Oh, so. forget marriage counseling. Everybody just need to read Miss Bev's books. Exactly. Read them together. And there we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sex fixes everything. Yeah. <laughs> if it's good. If it's, yeah, it has to be good now. Yeah. Come on. Not everybody's that's, good at it. No. I mean, you know, that's yeah. just, it's got to be good need to read a, read a romance novel so they'll know all the beats. <laughs> Now some folks just ain't got it together yet. Oh man! Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no shame. I'm, I'm cracking up and just <laughs> men writing you like, "Thank you." Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like I said, my job here is done. So for my my men listeners out there, get your wife some of Miss Bev's books. I'm just saying. Or get yourself one. If you need a Teachers. little work in that area. Yeah, if you need a little work in that area. You know, and I, and you know, and the, the guys like the Western, so I uh-huh. always, um, <clears throat> always recommend, because I write Westerns, too. Okay. Love me, love me some shoot 'em up as my grandfather used to call them. Okay. Um, I recommend uh, Topaz, uh-huh. and I really, really recommend uh, Jesse Rose, because okay. those are, you know, shoot 'em ups and guns and villains and trying to take my land and you okay. know, all of that you know so uh, yeah i have to read some of those too i love i, I go shooting the mayor you mentioned the buffalo soldiers i belong to the maryland 10th cavalry here gun club so i'm okay you know, all right range shooting stuff yeah good <laughs> yeah i have to check out some of those books she just writes everything y'all yeah everything. i do because yeah. you know why not right why not I've been if doing I had this your for 30 skill, years. I'd be writing it. I'm saying, if I had your skill, I'd be writing all the time, too. Well, you know, I've been at this for what, 30 years now, so yeah. I ain't qualified to do nothing else, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
sure you have other talents, Miss Betty. Yeah, I do. I'm sure I you do. do. I do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> like making people laugh for one. <laughs> mm, yeah, I can be real silly. I, or, or one of my superpowers is is making people weep. You know, I I've, know. I you know. I've been some places where you know, I had everybody in the ballroom crying. So mm -hmm. either laughing or crying or mm -hmm. somewhere in between. When you spoke at Black Readers Con, um, not this year, but last year. You had me, um, not in 2022, but 2021. I was sitting there the whole time, just oh, tears. Yeah. I told you you made me cry before I even got on it. I, I was like, oh, my God. Because my calendar was like, you're meeting with Beverly Jenkins is in 12 minutes. And I was like, huh? I can't believe it. I'm going to talk to Miss Beth. I started crying. My husband was like, get it together. And my friend Gracia was like, come on now. She called me. It was like, get it together. You're going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And it's been all right. So, see, you, you made me cry before we even had the interview. So, yeah, see? that's one of your superpowers, I too. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, now, you had a wonderful husband for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know if he inspired any of your male characters. He is my male character. Really? Uh, he is my male character. Um, okay. That silly, playful, always supportive kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. That's from him. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, there were days I wanted to bury his ass in the backyard. <laughs> you know, and there were days he wanted to bury my ass in the backyard. Because <laughs> love is hard. Love is hard. Yes, it is. Love is yes, hard. Yes, it is. But. Yeah. You know, when I, when I, um, when I wanted to, I told him that I wanted to write a book, he was, he didn't laugh because I have girlfriends with husbands, you know, fell over on the ground laughing when they said they mm. wanted to write a book. He said, well, what do you need? Mm. You know, what do you mm. need? What kind of machine? What? You know, so, mm. and, you know, when I first started, I was making like 27 cents a book, right? Mm -hmm. I had a little part-time job. I was mostly mom. Mm -hmm. But I had my hand in that brother's pocket down to his socks. <laughs> I mean, he was paying for everything. <laughs> and right. he didn't complain. He didn't mind. Um, mm -hmm. He was a contract negotiator for the teachers' union. So he made good money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But... <laughs> You know, he would go to conferences and hold my book up, you know, buy my wife's books so I can retire. <laughs> you know, I won't play golf Aww. the rest of my life, you know. But, um, that's wonderful. That was going to be one of my other questions was talking about how supportive he was. I think that's so great that he just. Yeah, I mean, you know, th th that's the kind of person you want in your life. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that I was blessed by that because mm -hmm. some of the writers that I know don't get that kind of support from their families or their, or their partners. Um, right. I remember when I first started, uh, one of the women, her husband was just not into it at all. I mean, he was, you know, bring her to the sign and he spent the whole time checking his watch. You know, how much longer mm -hmm. we got to be at this motherfucker? You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my podcast. Do not apologize. This is what okay, I do. Good, good. I'm trying. I'm trying to hold my mouth because I'm like, this is Auntie Bev, and I'm trying to be good. Girl, but, you have you know, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. My other shows, I be dropping all kinds of cusses. Yeah. People know. <laughs> yeah. So you know you. Oh, I thought it was my phone. Um. So when you got a relationship and you have that support, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you feel like you can do anything, you know, yeah. cause you're allowed to, to, yeah. to, to chase that dream. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was yeah. a good guy. He's a good yeah. guy. I got one of them. He supports my podcasts and when I wrote my first book and all so, that, yeah. I think I want to do, he's just like, yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Keep him. Dick. 
<laughs> yeah. Sometimes I want to bury his ass too. <laughs> yeah. He probably want to bury your ass too. You he know? does. Sometimes he want to bury me too. But like yeah. you said, it, it, it's work. It's work. Well, it's hard. But yeah. But we working on. We working on it. So you already mentioned you keep. You're so good. You just keep answering questions before I even get a chance to ask them. But I'm going to go back and ask it anyway. Okay. So I noticed that you do like to set these stories where black people actually walked. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me about that. Let's unpack that. Because, you know, why do you know, <clears throat> when, um, when I first started, before I mm -hmm. even got published, Mm -hmm. The thought in publishing was that, and, and there were editors that said this in print, mm -hmm. that there would never be a black historical writer because, number one, we don't have a history. And Which number I two. I mean, Iola Leroy approves that's what uh, I'm uh, Yeah. Um, we don't have a history, and nobody has that talent to do that. Mm. So. You know, I didn't know that until after I got published, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess that's sort of not true anymore, huh? You know, um, but I don't have to make this stuff up. Nope. You know, it's, you know, and that was one of the, and I've said this before in interviews, that was one of the reasons why I got enough rejections to paper my kitchen and yours mm, mm -hmm, it's because mm -hmm. in 1990 i think we started shopping this book and which would be nine song so it was published in 94 it was purchased in 93 mm -hmm. so on your 90s. birthday right yeah yeah we mm -hmm. had a big fight that day too oh. i tell that story it's like <laughs> i'll get to that in a minute <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what we was fighting about. Um, so 90. Mm -hmm. And I got enough rejections, like I said, to paper my kitchen and yours. Mm -hmm. And they loved the writing. Mm -hmm. But it was always but. But. Mm -hmm. And the but mm -hmm. had to do with, they didn't know what to do with it. Because mm -hmm. in their mind, and in probably most of America's mind, mm -hmm. A 19th century story with black people should be about slavery. Right. And this was not. This was free black people living in a small town on the plains of Kansas. Like, what the hell are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> right, what? This, this don't fit in none of the boxes. <laughs> don't fit in none of your boxes. Right. Right. So, um, but luckily, or, you know, luckily you have the talent and the, you show up at the right time with the talent. Mm -hmm. um, Avon Books wanted to buy the book um, mm -hmm. in 93. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it was June 3rd, 1993. Mm -hmm. Hubby and I was having a fight. I don't know what we was fighting about. It was serious. And mm -hmm. I was one of them follow each other up and down the steps and the neck oh, rocking no. and, the, and the fingers <laughs> going and all that, right? And the phone rang. Uh-huh. Pick up the phone. Stop. <laughs> pause right there. Right, pause, I'm not right. done I'll be with back. you yet. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> it was New York calling uh -huh. to, you know, buy the book. Uh -huh. And uh, talked to her for a few minutes and hung up. And I told him, well, I just sold the book. Uh -huh. <laughs> he looked at me and said, well, I guess I can take your little black ass to dinner then, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes, motherfucker, you got to take me to dinner. <laughs> and be happy about that shit, too. I know. And he was. <laughs> Fight was over. I love it. <laughs> you know, we grew you up went, in the 70s. Every, <laughs> you know, we grew up in the 70s. We went to college in the 70s. Every, every other word is a cuss word, right? Right, right, right. Still today. <laughs> I got girlfriends, you know, and it's my daughter, she's, how old is she? 42 now. And when she was in college, 
She and I were on the phone, and we are going back and forth, and every other word out of her mouth is a cuss word, too. Right, right, Because she grew right. up with her mom and her daddy, right? <laughs> and so she said, somebody asked her, who are you talking to? She said, uh -huh. my mama. She, they're like, what? <laughs> and you're not getting your ass beat right now? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Lord knows I couldn't cuss to my parents. They'd be like, what, what are you I talking about? I couldn't cuss to mine either. <laughs> I, we, I could after we got older. Right. You know, you know, when she got no, used to it. I still can't. If I try to, my parents are like, oh. Yeah. No, my I mama got it. used to it. And then she was so funny because I'm the oldest of seven. Right. Right. And my youngest sister is 13 years younger than me. And I was on the phone with mama one day. She said, you know what's funny? I said, what? She said, hearing Adrian cuss, my little <laughs> sister. I was like, mom, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> So it's so funny to hear her cussing. I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's funny. You went from, uh, I'm not done with your black ass. So you just wait right there. Yeah. <laughs> and the phone call just ended it all. Ended it all. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. So I want to touch back on something that you said that you had gotten a lot of rejections because there wasn't a place. Yeah. For your stories, even though, like I said, we had Francis Ellens Watkins Harper, who wrote, you know, Iola Leroy way back in 1892. So we've right. really been on the romance scene for a long time. But, mm -hmm. you know, white folks don't always know that. So, but why didn't you give up? Because that wasn't my goal. I didn't want to be a writer. Mm -hmm. I had no, <clears throat> no desire or no wish or no oh my god I want to be a writer all I ever wanted mm -hmm. to do was work in the library mm. and I was doing that mm -hmm. the only reason I <laughs> put my stuff out there was mm -hmm. to shut up this woman at work <laughs> she you know it's a good friend uh -huh. and she had just been published and, and she's, she's Caucasian mm -hmm. and she had just gotten published and we were celebrating her right and I was telling her about this book I was working on. Mm -hmm. And she was in RWA and all that. I know nothing about any of that. Uh -huh. um, and she said, well, bring it in. Let me see it. Mm -hmm. So I brought it in. And she read it. And she said, well, you need to get this published. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, I started working there at 85. Mm -hmm. So this is probably 88, 89, 87, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And, mm -hmm. you know, and... Back then, mass market was closed to us. Right. You know, um, until Terry McMillan kicked the door in, mm -hmm. uh, there were very few, you know, other than the big swell of black writing that we had in the, in the, in the, in the, from the 60s to maybe 76. Mm -hmm. But there was no place to get it published. You know, mm -hmm. there had been two, two African American romances published. Uh, traditionally, Sandra mm -hmm. Kitt and oh, I can't think of her name. It'll come to me. But anyway, um, I'm like, where am I going to get this published? Mm -hmm. And I tell people that Laverne, it was her name, mm -hmm. harassed me every day. Well, did you find an? Did you find an editor? Did you find? <laughs> did you? Do? You know, like I, like I said, I was in heaven because I was working in the library. That's all I ever wanted out of life. Right, 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 right. But you know, sometimes life. You know, switches on you and says, here, put this hat on. See how this fits. Right. You know, and you can either turn that gift down or you can just hang in there. So, mm -hmm. so the fact that I was getting all of these rejections, mm -hmm. I didn't care because I was going to work in the library every day, you know, which right. is what I wanted out of life. <laughs> I could care about a, a rejection letter. Right, you know? right. So, but, um. Obviously, you know, things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, it put me on the path to you. To where? Okay. So. To me. I'm going to mm -hmm. take that to me. You brought it, put your <laughs> path to me. Little old me. <laughs> Love it. So now you write 19th century historical romance during the antebellum years, during and after the Civil War, which were not good times for us. Yeah. 
And yet, in all this turmoil, your books have HEAs, Happily Ever Afters. What kind of pushback do you get from that? None. Really? I never got any from editorial. You know, my editors, okay. most of my editors have been women of color. Mm -hmm. And I've been blessed by that, so I didn't have to explain stuff. All right. You know, um, mm -hmm. the readers, you know, black women have been reading romance forever, even when there were no black romance. Uh, romances. We were reading romance because mm -hmm. I read everything. I'm a big fantasy reader. Um, mm -hmm. But no pushback. You know, you have, you know, of course, some of the white people were couldn't see how you could have a story mm -hmm. based on our history and have an mm -hmm. HEA. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't have an HEA, we wouldn't be here. Right. You know, right. if you didn't come home after dealing with America and you didn't have any support at home mm -hmm. in whatever form, whatever, however you identify gender wise, whatever, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here. You yeah. know, to come home and get that support so that you could be ready to go out there and hit that, hit that mule the next day and keep doing it and raise a family and keep doing it. You had to have some love at home. Mm -hmm. um, so at least that's my. Yeah, there had to be take. something there that was keeping you going. Right. That's my take yeah. on it. Um, mm -hmm. And some people may not agree, but that's okay. You know, we, we all got opinions. So, mm -hmm. But mine is. Even if they wrong. Even if they wrong. <laughs> even if I'm wrong. You know, but. You ain't wrong. My, they wrong. My <laughs> Anybody that don't like your books, come for me. Okay, yeah, well, I'm just saying. Know, as 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 Jill Scott used to say, everything ain't for everybody, you know. And so, that, right, you know. So, mm -hmm. but that is my take on it. Um, those soldiers coming home from World War Two and mm -hmm. you know getting beat up and lynched and you know punched and all of that. Mm -hmm. you know, can you imagine how they did what they felt like when they got home and mm -hmm. and, and that woman was there or that, or that man was there and yeah. you know and you got that love and mm -hmm. so love cures a lot of shit you know at least yeah, it makes it you makes you tolerate it a little bit better mm -hmm. um, but yeah the HEA yeah. you know um, but I never got any pushback from 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 my readers about any of that, except for the sister <laughs> who sent me this long ass email about how I needed to get right with God. Because what? <laughs> oh girl, the, the women on my Facebook page they hollered because I what? quoted it. Yeah, she, <clears throat> you know. And what was so funny was that she had my books on her nightstand. She didn't read all my books, right? And she but she's she telling could, you to get right with God. Yeah, because I was making her have unclean thoughts. <laughs> Sis, your, your, your thoughts ain't my problem. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I told her, I said, you know, and, and back then I, I was a licensed minister. And I said, you know what? Me and God are fine. Right. You know, I, this is a gift. This ability to write is a gift from God. And have you ever read the book of the Song of Solomon? I Hello. Mean, have you that's ever in, had that translated for you? That's in, in Indigo. Um, but yeah, she, you know, she, and you know, so I told her, I said, don't worry about me. You know, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Stay yeah, in your lane said, over there. <laughs> she couldn't figure out, you know, what was wrong with her life. Until she looked at her nightstand and saw my books and figured it out. She said and she would really think that God would, would really rather I write something that benefited him. And I'm like, you Was know what? Was she married? Girl, I didn't ask. I didn't, I didn't I, even know. See, I, you bad at me because I'd have been like, sis, go and get yourself a vibrator and go knock it out. You'll feel better. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> You know, a, a, a battery operated boyfriend. You know, there you go. Get you a bob, you know, so. Get, right. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a whole lot of batteries because I feel like you really pent oh, up. Oh, God. And you need to let some stuff out. 
<laughs> I'm like, really? So yeah. I, wow. You know, I've gotten a few of those over the years, but you know, you can all count them on like one hand. Thirty years, that ain't bad to have three people that want you to get with Jesus. <laughs> so I'm like, goodness. Jesus is fine, and so am I. Um, so yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Stay mm -hmm. in your lane. Stay in your <laughs> Please, lane. Please over there. <laughs> Quit swerving. <laughs> You'll be mad because you ain't got that kind of love in your life. Right. Go on over there, get the bob, get a whole yeah. lot of batteries. <laughs> Just yeah. And I mean, if you really got a problem, why you got all my books on your nightstand? Exactly. You know, I already bought them. You know, I already. I didn't made my twenty-seven cents off of your books. Come on now. Ah. <laughs> oh. So do you face any challenges when you're trying to balance the the historical accuracy of these times mm -mm. with creating a compelling I, you know, I romance? Don't, I don't, I don't make it up. I don't have to. But you know what? It, 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 what the, balancing the, the, that with a romance? You, yeah. You know, you try not to, <clears throat> if I'm editing and I'm, you know, reading through it mm -hmm. and if my eyes start glazing over. Mm -hmm. Then I know I got too much. It's, it's like a we call it an info dump. Right, right, right. Uh, dump too much information. Because mm -hmm. if it's making my eyes glaze over, it's gonna make the reader's eyes glaze over. Right, and that's right. not the, that's not my. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back and 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 cut. Because a lot of times, uh, less is better. Mm -hmm. um, in night song, I, I talked about the the native flute. And I had like, you know, and I wanted to do the myth behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, what, why, you know, what was the myth behind the the love flute that the Native guys played? Mm -hmm. So I had like three paragraphs. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, okay, this is my, I didn't even, two and a half sentences. That's all I needed. <laughs> After I went through and, 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 and said, okay, get rid of this, get rid of this, you know, restructure that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times. <clears throat> so that's the problem that I have. And, you know, and plus historical writers, we want to put all the history in the books. We want to put, we want to do the info dump because we want right. you to know, know right. all of this stuff that, you know. All right. So, so that's for me is the, is, is the challenge mm. in keeping it balanced. Because I have to remind myself, you are writing a romance. You are not writing a history book. <laughs> you are writing a romance. Right. So, yeah. So what drew you to write, you know, historical fiction? I mean, how did you, what made you, you know, decide I don't know. this you know, is what I've you I've always to do? loved a good love story, even when they, they didn't feature us. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm, I'll be 72 in two weeks. So. Yes, and I meant to say that happy early birthday, February thank 15th. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yes. you. Yep, February yes. 15th. Me and Gary Clark Jr. Uh, ah. Yeah. Ooh, that boy looked good. Um. <laughs> I was watching him last night. Uh, <laughs> talk about cougar moment. Um, <laughs> you know Your who he is? You know who Gary Clark? You know who Gary Clark Jr. is? No. You know who he is? No. You have to look him up. He's a, a guitar player. Okay. And he is fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Gary Clark Jr., if you're out there listening. No, well, he's married. He's fine. He's married. He's fine. <laughs> he's younger than my kids. So it's like, no. I give my daughter a heart attack. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mom, what are you doing? Uh, uh, having fun. Mind you. Having fun, girl. <laughs> but um, what were we talking about? See, you done got me <laughs> Have me off track again. We're talking about you, you know, uh, how you got into oh, historical, historical fiction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, always loved a good love story. Mm -hmm. Always loved history. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people my mom was black before it was fashionable. So uh -huh. I grew up with the history in my home. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> my husband and I, we were together like, you know, 10 years before we had any kids. Mm -hmm. They're like, nah, we ain't doing it. You know, we're watching our friends, friends rolling around, running around behind these kids, toddlers and stuff. We're like, no, we ain't doing that. We're having too much fun to have kids. Uh -huh. Right, right. So <clears throat> he would go, and he was, 
he played tennis in high school. Mm -hmm. And so after work, and he was a, a printer back then mm -hmm. in our early days. And uh, after work, he'd go play tennis. And I was mm -hmm. working at the library at Michigan State University back then. And I'd go home and read or work on this little story that I was working on, which turned out to be Night Song. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I read a historical romance. I read Julie Garwood and Joanna Lindsay and, you know, Amanda Quick and all of the, <clears throat> all the white writers who were really, really popular back then. Mm -hmm. um, but my story, it didn't make sense for me to write a story featuring black people and set it against a white background, mm -hmm. knowing what I knew about our history. Mm -hmm. Because when when Ellen Edwards bought that bought Night Song the day Mark and I were fighting, um <laughs> you know, it was I don't know, four hundred and fifty pages of heat. Uh -huh. I mean, you open that manuscript and, you know, and heat would come up out of it. <laughs> little flames. <laughs> yeah, little flames. You need asbestos gloves in order to <laughs> to hold it. And she looked at it and she said, love your writing. Love the love scenes. Uh -huh. We need a story. I was like, oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, what? <laughs> You mean I gotta write a story? Yes. Cause you your first book. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Right. That right, first right. book. You know, it's like. So, um, like I said, it didn't make sense mm -hmm. to have these two black folks against a majority background. So, and I mm -hmm. knew where I could find what I needed. You know, for, mm -hmm. for the background for the story. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's what I did. But, um, yeah, it was, I was like, what do you mean I got to write a story? I got to write a Sex story, girl. What the hell is this? All you got is bang, 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 you know? That's all you got. I didn't know no better. Sales, damn it. Just sell the sex. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know no better. Oh, so this question is from Gracia, who I told you she's from South Carolina. She says she absolutely loves you and loves, loves, loves Indigo. It's her favorite book. Mm -hmm. This question is from her. She says, okay. you write your heroines with such fierceness. What real-life heroines have inspired you? Real life. Probably Michelle Obama. Okay. I'm always so focused on the past. That kind of threw me. And she wanted somebody who was real life. I mean, um, people from the past are real life. They don't have to. I don't think oh, they have to yeah, be alive. Yeah. Well, I need sleep. <laughs> it's, it's nap time. For <laughs> um, instance, Ellen Watkins Harper, mm -hmm. who wrote Bury Me in a Free Land, mm -hmm. which was the iconic poem that was an uh, abolitionist. She also wrote Iola Leroy, but this mm -hmm. was after her uh, career as an abolitionist, mm -hmm. she was just fierce. Mm -hmm. And if you read some of her works, because she was also involved in the, what has come to be called the feminism movement, mm -hmm. um, some of her takes on the other side were really, right. you know, they'll make you chuckle. Mm -hmm. um, but her, uh, Oh, what is the sister's name? I wish I had, she gave me this question before. I could have had a long list. Now people are like, she don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> um, oh, Anna Julia Cooper. Cooper? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She is, you know, great educator. Mm -hmm. She's also the only American woman on your passport. Hmm. Yes. I have to look at my passport. Look I at your passport. Her. She's okay. in there. Huh. Only woman of any color, any race. Huh. Anna Julia. Because she was fabulous. 
Mm. Uh, Flojo. That's my girl. I was so hurt when she died. You know, Flojo because of all that she... Because Flojo, because she just Flojo. Yeah, she was Flojo. I mean, all of those early black athletes, mm -hmm. Gibson, mm -hmm. um, and I can't think of the woman who inspired um, Misty Copeland, the ballerina. I mean, it's, you know, black women, just in Wilma general. Rudolph. Wilma yeah. Rudolph was a good one, yeah. You know, and Dorothy Sterling says that the reason that the black women were so successful now, in the 19th century, but we could also apply that today. Mm -hmm. It's because we had three gifts. Mm -hmm. We worked, whether we were enslaved or free. Mm -hmm. We had a commitment to community mm -hmm. and community activism and social activism. And we pushed the boundary on gender and race. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing that since day one. And we continue to do that today. Yeah. And that's what gives us, you know, we went home drinking men juleps, you know, in 1845. Mm -hmm. You know, we were either enslaved or we was working trying to help put food on the table. Right. Um, I mean, you look back at the, you know, the women who were chasing these slave catchers out of their communities mm -hmm. with their mops and their brooms and blowing their whistles so mm -hmm. everybody would know, you know, Need your help, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. and pushing the envelope on gender and race with um, sister girl who had the newspaper, uh, Mary Ann Shad Carey, mm -hmm. first woman of any race mm -hmm. on the North American continent, a newspaper, mm -hmm. and girlfriend had to write her editorials as Brother Shad because mm -hmm. she didn't think the the men of the movement would. Uh, respect her and she was right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once they found out she was perpetrating they were like right 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 yeah so but she's also one of the first lawyers too she got arrested mm -hmm. her and uh sojourner truth got arrested for trying to vote mm. <laughs> when they wasn't supposed to be voting you know mm. we always cause them commotion of course we do because that's what but, we you know, do. that's what we do best you know we don't so. know no other way <laughs> right yeah coming so, up the way we came up with our history yeah yeah so that's what we do so that's my roundabout answer to to the to the shiro question yeah and what about she, her other question was would you ever consider a collaboration with another black female historical fiction writer and if so who um vanessa riley is is probably one of the people that i would consider but mm -hmm. me and Brenda Jackson have been trying to get together. Uh, okay. I would write a historical, she would write mm -hmm. a contemporary. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing um, <clears throat> Kimani's on the side, the novellas, mm -hmm. we tried to get together and we were going to do the thing. And the editors wanted to put a third writer in there. We're like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're doing. We just, right. just us too. Just us. Yeah, so you know, they didn't want to play around, so we just picked up our toys and went home. Oh. So we, you know, we, we, we've talked about, you know, trying to get that together. Because her birthday was yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she was 70 yesterday. Oh. So, you know, we, we, get, we get old. We, you know, getting ready to turn the... Get turn the... Finest one. Well, yeah, but, you know, the brain is like... If you looked at your, <laughs> and looked at your license to see what your date is, you know... <laughs> the the well, license you don't Brenda lie. Thought about yeah, the license don't lie. <laughs> but have you and Brenda thought about doing something indie published? In, well, Brenda has to... her own company. Oh, okay, so which are we? So for? she been doing. You know, she write one book for for Harlequin, and then she write one book for herself. I forgot all the money. You know, she's so, doing well. But see, which are we I'm for? lazy though. See, <laughs> see. <laughs> You? Oh, no. oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, Brenda got the discipline. Uh, I'm like, when we going to the beach? You know, it's like, because we went to Hawaii, you know, she's part of our travel group. So right. we went to Hawaii and um, 
We on the beach. Uh -huh. Like, where's Brenda? She up in the room writing. Girlfriend, we're in Hawaii. What do, What are you doing? <laughs> But, you know, God bless her. She's got that. She's got that drive. She's got that discipline. I ain't got no discipline. You know, I'm Get always behind. Get out of behind. here. All them books you got, you I'm got some kind of discipline. I'm always behind. I'm always begging my editor for more time. I'm always, <laughs> you know, let me make bread today instead of working on this book. <laughs> you know, let me walk to Jamaica instead of working on this book. Let me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, bad. She is Brenda the hardest working writer I know, and I just love her to death. I just love her to death. She's amazing. Well, She's I amazing. need to see that book between the two of y'all. Yeah, yeah. We, we, so. we, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So how do you see your books contributing to the larger conversation about representation and diversity in the romance genre? Joy. Um, looking at our history through our lens in a way that is reader friendly. Mm -hmm. There's no test on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I think my readers know probably more about black doctor, black female doctors, um, the exodus. In fact, one of my readers is in a PhD program for American history. Mm -hmm. And she's telling her professor about the exodus. Mm -hmm. and he's like, what are you talking about? You made that up. That, you must have that confused with. She said, but luckily, Miss Bev, you have your sights in the back of the book. So she said, so I just sort of felt that under his face. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how did he feel? You know, how did he eat crow with, you know, with, foot in his, with his foot in his mouth? And she said, he right. wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. you know, um, Why do you include the bibliographies in the back of the book? Because that's like new, unique to you. No, it's not unique to me. I stole really? stole that from Susan Johnson, who's a really? uh, romance writer back in the eighties. It was fabulous. Okay, okay. But for me, it's for that question: Did black mm. people really do this? Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I don't. I don't have to. You know, people start questioning. You know, the 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 the, the truthfulness, the span of things, the mm -hmm. names of things. Mm -hmm. You know, you go look at my site and then you can come back and we can have an intelligent conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mm -hmm. the bib was because it answers those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, I've had um, black English professors um, celebrate Ryan Fontaine mm -hmm. because usually in literature, the mulatto is tragic. Mm -hmm. You know, they you know they usually wind up harming themselves because they can't. They don't know who they are. They can't. You know, and I took that and you know had Ryan passing, but he was passing so he could help his community. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Which is something that I guess has never been done before. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm just tipping over tables everywhere. Um. <laughs> Keep on doing it. That's what we need. I'm knocking over tables in my own very, very small way. Yes, in but, a big um, way. Don't be calling it small. Well, you know, in the, in the scheme of things, it's I mean, because you have, you have these great historians out here mm -hmm. who are doing this, you know, fabulous, doing, that, doing the real work. <clears throat> um, Tara Hunter and uh, Keith Blaine and, and, you know, all these great women and men, um, Art mm -hmm. Burton is my man to go to for the black, you know, the black West, you know, there ain't nothing okay. Art know, that don't know about, you know, the okay. black West. Okay. And nobody's reading your books. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I put them in the back of my books mm -hmm. and then people go and, and say, Oh, I need to know more about this. Oh, she's got this book in here. I'll go get that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to do my little part, right? Not only in telling the story, but to 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 preach, you know, a wider appreciation mm -hmm. for those who are doing the actual work, whose shoulders I'm standing on, to put mm -hmm. the history in my books. Yeah. Um, 
because I didn't invent the wheel. You know, mm -hmm. I just invented a different way to spin it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones that are doing, you know, the hard work. So. Yeah. So you published your first book at 43. Mm -hmm. You went from rejections to indigo being taught in college curriculums. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for aspiring writers out there? Finish the damn book. Right. I always say that because mm -hmm. they spend a whole lot of time talking about their books. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm writing this book. and I'll Quit talking about it. Write it. Mm -hmm. There's somebody waiting to read it. Mm -hmm. I also tell them, don't let someone else's success make you feel less. Mm -hmm. They are on their path. You're on yours. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and it's, it's natural to be envious and be jealous mm -hmm. when your critique partner, you know, gets that big contract and you still unpublished. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't let somebody else's success make you feel less. They're on their path. You're on yours. You know, and you can apply that to, to just about anything, not just writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, the, the words from a wise old hen. <laughs> Sam, you are too much. Too much. <laughs> so I know you just released To Catch a Raven, which I have, and I just started reading. Yeah. Do you have any other books in progress right now? Uh, yeah. I'm doing suspense. I'm going back to the suspense. Um, okay. This is a book that I've been promising my readers for the last, I don't know, 20 years. So to keep them from showing up in front of my house with signs and bricks. <laughs> Because I'm in between <laughs> books right now. Uh -huh. I'm working on that. Uh -huh. um, got some other stuff I can't talk about that I'm okay. going to put out there maybe and do something different. Okay. Um, they want my dragon book. I want to write that. Cause like I said, and that's I'm the a... one that's in the back of the novella. That's like right. your indie book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's in bad shape. It needed to be edited and all that. But <laughs> I was like, okay, stick this in here. Let them... And they were like, where's the rest of it? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Lord, calm down, calm down. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. Promise. Right. You've been promising us sweet for 20 years. Well, how long is it going to take you to get this done? I don't know. Girl, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I got, I got more more road behind me than I got in front of me. So All right, right, we'll right. see how, we'll see what we get, what we do. So will there be any books published in 2023? Maybe if I can get okay. this um, suspense done. Okay. Um, we're doing it. I'm doing that independent. So. Okay. Um, oh, and also the uh, book 11 for the Blessing series will be out in October. Oh, okay. It just won't be, a, won't be a historical, but, mm -hmm. you know, they've been waiting on this for two years. So. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you get one book for sure, two maybe. Okay. okay. And where can readers find your books? Everywhere, everywhere books are sold, mm -hmm. online, um, in stores, mm -hmm. um, independent. We're trying to support, you know, independent stores. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, friendly neighborhood, independent. If they don't have it, tell them they need to get them some romance mm -hmm. and have them order it for you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Amazon, iBooks, Kobo. Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. all them people, okay. and uh, they got large print mm -hmm. for those of us with old eyes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So everywhere you can mm -hmm. get my books, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere, y'all. <laughs> and I have one. My my good friend. Demetrius Frazier has his own bookstore. He has an online store and a, a storefront now, Resist Booksellers. So I think he carries some of your books as well. So. Yeah, well, he can probably get them through Bookshop if he doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Tell yeah. him I said we could always use a new book, you know, 
every new bookstore, mm -hmm. you know, an angel gets their wings. So <laughs> <laughs> support your local indies. Yes, yes. And where can we find you on social media, Miss Bell? Lord have mercy, girl. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't remember, don't worry about it, because it's going to be on the web page, y'all. All her uh, socials are there. Uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'm author Miss Bev. Mm -hmm. I have a Mastodon account, same name, but I'm not there very often. Uh -huh. uh, I had three, three Facebook pages. Uh -huh. uh, we have the the regular page, which is supposed to be for your family and friends, but it's a work page for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the brand page. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fans of Beverly Jenkins page. Okay. Um, so I got four. And then there's oh, a wow. spoiler page. Oh. Because when the book drops at midnight, mm -hmm. somebody done inhaled it and it's six o'clock in the morning. They want to talk about <laughs> it, right? And I can't let them do that on the pages because not everybody else has read it. So right, right. I have a spoiler room specifically for those who have inhaled the books. Okay. And they can go and talk privately. Um, and we do book club once a month, once a okay. month too. So we just did. We did Forbidden Tuesday night, so mm -hmm. we're going through mm -hmm. the list as they were published. So we're doing okay. Breathless next month. So oh. you should join us. You I should, would love to. You should join us. I yeah, would love to. You just have to. to like the page. You know, Facebook don't got so wonky, you know, it's like, can yeah. we just go back to being <laughs> just simple the way it used to be? Right, right, right. Because there's nothing else that I can use that will accommodate all these women. So. Right, right. Right. In the format right. that we want to use. So, but right. you're welcome. I, I, I also, I want to come on one of these trips y'all do. I know I'm not well, one you know of your what? close I tell friends, people, but I, I, I need to come. I need to tell, tell people, <laughs> y'all need to put your own trips together. <laughs> we don't let I just, any, you. <laughs> we don't let just anybody roll with us. Plus we I old. Know. I know. know. You got to be at least 50. You, <laughs> you got to be at least 50. <laughs> So, I'm 52, so I'm, oh, I'm going to be 53 in August, so okay, I'm good. Okay, well, that, well yeah, you qualify, yeah. <laughs> I qualify. You know, I I, what want, I need I to do, invitation. <laughs> you know, what I need to do is maybe put together a trip for for all y'all. Yeah. Because uh, I got, you know, the next generation coming up, y'all, yeah. Yeah. that would be interested in that. And mm -hmm. we'll have to yeah. see about that. We'll see I'm about that. Come. I'll, I'm ready. Just and you know, and I have a pajama rich. party every two years too. Can can a sister come? Can a sister get an yeah, invite? Yeah, your sister can come. But you know, okay. we usually put the we put the the tickets tickets uh, up on my Facebook page, and there's usually hundred hundred spots. Okay. Seventeen minutes, they were gone. Wow. They don't be playing. <laughs> I guess not. I guess not. By the time I see it, it might be sold out. It's already sold out. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep you posted. All right. Okay. Well, sadly, we have come to the end of our oh. show. And I am so, so, so. I mean, I could keep you talking here for hours, but I don't want to hog you up like that. But uh, I'm back. just. Oh, will you really? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yeah, great. I'll come back. So thank you so much for sharing your time and your talents with me here today. You have no idea. This has just made my entire year, oh, 2023. Well, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the invite. I had fun. Good. I had a good I'm time. Glad. It's good getting to know you. Oh, you too. So I put you on my, my list of folks I like. Oh, <laughs> see, that's it. Now my whole decade is made now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Y'all heard that right. Mm -hmm. I'm on her list of people yeah. she likes. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you so much. You're I welcome. really appreciate you. And Booze and Bros, you know how I do. At the end of every show, I leave you with a quote. And today's comes from the late author and activist Bell Hooks. And she said, to truly love, we must learn to mix various ingredients. Care, affection, recognition, respect, commitment, and trust as well as honest and open communication. Until next time, y'all, you know what to do. Grab a book and read, and I'm out. Thank you for lending me your ear today. If you've enjoyed this independent podcast, you can help me continue to shine the light on Black authors and their stories 
by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash between the reads or by giving a one-time gift at www.kofi.com slash between the reads podcast. That's ko ficom slash between the reads podcast. Tune in next time for another great episode.